Oh, hello there, fellow maker. Welcome to the shop. Got your buddy Bill here today. I want to talk about CAD, computer aided design, drawing little 3D models of whatever object you want to make. In my case, of course, that would be props. It's super useful if you're going to 3D print or CNC machine any of your parts. But even if you're not going to do that, CAD is super useful for like pre visualizing a project ahead of time, even if you're going to make the parts by hand out of basic materials. I did this for my District 9 rifle years ago. I drew the whole thing up in SketchUp, and then I printed the side views out so I could use those as templates for cutting my parts out of wood. Really useful having all of that sort of figuring out done ahead of time in 3D. Now, I was super fortunate in high school. I got to learn a bunch of CAD. My school offered it. My mom even taught it at her high school. So I had a bit of a head start. Nowadays, it couldn't be easier to get into doing CAD of any variety. There's a bunch of different software packages out there. I use Fusion 360, but there's like Onshape and SolidWorks or even Tinkercad if you want something super basic. And most of these offer some sort of free for makers or free for hobbyist version so you can get into it without signing up for a subscription. Like I said, I use Fusion 360 and if that's your jam, I've even got a beginner video course for sale over on my website. I'll cough up a coupon code for you in just a little bit. But first, let's dive into 10 operations. These are all basic operations that every CAD package uses. And once you learn all these basic uh, concepts, they'll translate between any software package. The first one is primitives. These are basic three-dimensional forms, boxes, cylinders, spheres, toruses, or a whole bunch of others. You could even build a whole lot of props just by jamming these basic primitives together. Uh, it's surprising how often I end up um, using things like cylinders over and over again uh, when making even really complicated things. So primitive objects, useful in just about every project I've done. Next is sketches. These are like your 2D drawings, like a blueprint, except in CAD, you usually use them as some sort of profile to then do another operation on like an extrude or revolve. Uh, sketches get used in every single project and they are super versatile. Next is the extrude command. This is probably the command that gets used the most by me anyway. When you draw one of your 2D sketches, you can easily extrude that shape into a three dimensional form. You can also use that for cutting holes. That's one of the main ways I use the extrude command. Up next is the revolve command. This is kind of like turning something on a lathe. You draw out one of your 2D sketches as half of the profile, and then you rotate that around a central axis and it makes a cylindrical shape. Again, super, super useful, especially if you're making something like a lightsaber. Next is the combine tool, also known as booleans. There are a bunch of different ways you can combine two objects. The most obvious one is to join two objects together. You can also cut objects out. You can use one object as a tool to cut a shape out of another object. You can choose to keep or remove that tool. You can also choose to keep the area between the two objects that are intersecting. Before we get to the final five, I do want to talk about my Fusion 360 course. I'm quite proud of it. It's about four hours long, a super quick introduction to the basics, just the tools I use for prop making and nothing more. I realized that the interface for a lot of these programs could be really daunting. So I wanted to make something that was simple and pared down to just the stuff that I use. I've heard from a lot of people who took this course who said, you know, they had struggled getting into CAD, but watching the video course was just enough a bite for them to digest and really get into it. And it finally clicked, which is exactly what I want to hear. Uh, like I said, it's for sale over on our website. It's usually 20 bucks, which I consider a pretty good bargain. However, with the coupon code CAD rules, you'll get another 25% off. So go treat yourself, dive in, get the full scoop and learn the basics for Fusion 360. Thank you and I cannot wait to see what you make in CAD. The next operation is lofting. I have a love-hate relationship with this operation. It is so useful, but also sometimes so weird in the way it works. Basically, if you have two different profiles, you can sort of uh, loft, as they call it, you can loft a body between those two profiles to create some really wild shapes. Sometimes this is like the only way to do something uh, and it can be a little bit frustrating making it work, but boy, is it handy. Next is the patterning tool or an array or copies. Basically what you do is take one object that you've created and making several copies of it in a pattern. 
So you can do like a circular pattern and rotate an object around a cylinder or a rectangular pattern if you want to make a grid. Up next is the mirror command. Very simple, but used so often. If I'm making something like the Rattler from Starfield, I only really have to make half the object. It was perfectly symmetrical, except for the text. Don't mirror your text, it'll be backwards. Uh, if you're making something that's perfectly symmetrical, you can model half of it and then in an instant, model the other side of it. I love using the mirror tool whenever I can. Up next we have sculpting in Fusion. This is a very basic sort of freeform sculpting tool. This is for getting amorphous uh, forms, things like gun grips. I do a lot of gun grips with the sculpting tool. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, sort of pushing and pulling of vertices. If you're familiar with uh, subdivision modeling in Maya or something like that, it's pretty similar to that. Uh, there are a lot of shapes and weird forms I don't know how to get with any of the other commands that the sculpting tool nails for me. Finally, one of my favorites, chamfers and fillets. You usually wait till the very end to add all of my chamfers. Basically, you can take any 90 degree edge and add a nice 45 degree chamfer to it or a round over or fillet. Uh, this is a great way to add a finishing touch to your prop. Uh, and there are a lot of props that, uh, especially sci-fi stuff that lean heavily on chamfers. There you go, those are 10 fairly basic CAD operations that I use in almost every single project when I'm sitting there at the computer. And like I said, whatever software package you're using is gonna have some version of any of these operations. And learning these and having them ready to go when you're doing your modeling is gonna help you get to your finish line uh, sooner with a lot less headaches. I really appreciate you hanging out with me in the shop today. I hope you learned something. I hope you go and try modeling something in CAD. Uh, it's a ton of fun. It's personally one of my favorite ways to spend the day, put on some music and just draw space guns in 3D, especially if I get to print them. It really makes me feel like Tony Stark. Again, that Fusion 360 beginner course is for sale over on our website. Get 25% off with the code CAD rules. And I cannot wait to see what you're going to make. A special thanks goes out to the members of our Extra Credit Club. These are the fine human beings who fork over their hard-earned cash, make sure we can afford to keep a roof over our heads and keep our cats fed. We appreciate all of the support over the years. You guys are amazing. If you want to join and get access to our videos early, we'll have a link down below to either Patreon or right here on YouTube memberships. Thank you again so much. We can't do this without you. That wraps it up for me. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next build.